I come from the side of architecture where it's about making things, creating things, building sort of architectural and scale sculptures or installations is how I would describe it. It's really coming from sort of the background of architectural training and education. spent a lot of time in looking at patterning and making decorations on and, and buildings and, and that type of formwork and it goes back to sort of trying to you know counteract the banal of, of everyday functional spaces. I've worked in traditional architectural firms and I sort of gravitated to this type of work trying to build architecture full scale yourself. That's what led to the choice of using cardboard, was the temporal nature of the work, and then it goes and gets recycled. For Northern Spark, I did seven large cardboard, they were called night blooms, temporarily up for one day. And they were all made out of weather-resistant cardboard, provided sort of a sheltering space, a canopy. And then again, it, that's very much that temporal nature. I mean, they just, they were up and gone and rendered into the recycling. This is Rhino 3D. And I pretty much use it to build all my cardboard structures. That allows me to plan and figure out um, how these components are laid out and put together and configured. I first start out with doing a little bit of sketching and then I lead into working primarily on the computer to do all the work. Title it um, convolution, which is like a bend or a fold in space. It's my attempt to make the cardboard move through space and, and sort of spatial and it's in that sort of square box or container that it's sitting in to counteract against that. Essentially I take the components and I sort of unroll them and they end up as individual components that I then take and add interlocking teeth that I use then to bind them together and uh, put together all the different surfaces of the, of the cardboard components. Um, this is a, a CNC cutting machine that's primarily used for um, cutting mats for frames and I'm using it now to cut um, corrugated um, sheet stock. So I essentially I load the, I take the file from the computer, load it into the control software from the cutting machine, and then it gets sent to the cutting machine where it'll get cut out using a cutting head. Early on in, in my architectural studies, I spent a lot of time working with and studying manufactured appliques or decorations to spaces and sort of a deployable decoration or a deployable addition to an environment. Presently, I'm installing it in the SUVAC gallery. I brought all the components flat to the space and I've just been zippering together piece by piece. Um, six flat pieces makes one full component. And then those components will go together to make the loops and various um, shapes and forms. This model was really created towards the end of the approval process for the project. Um, this was done a couple months before I started um, in going into production on the cardboard components. So this was able to show to the gallery here and to other people sort of um, to get a sense of how it would fit in the space and uh, to sort of feel that sort of compression against the walls. The, the work is really about using historical ornamentation, decoration, pattern making processes. It's a performative piece. It's moving through the space. Um, it's not just static objects or very functional components. So I think that'll I think that their perspective of what architecture can be it will be, you know, redefined or, or changed. We 
What's interesting about it is, is the ability to sort of work in a smaller space where it's sort of compressing to fit in that volume to sort of get inside there. There's going to be a different look at it from inside of it versus looking at it across the street versus, you know, sitting in it. This is r much larger in scale than it's previously been in there. I think that's, that's what I was really excited to do. Minnesota Original is made possible by the State Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota.